Good afternoon, everyone. Two great presentations prior to us, so great job by you guys. Love the products, and we'll like to get with you offline after our presentation as well. So um, my name is Ray Carballo, Director of Commercial Sales for Blue Stream. This is Ramona Smith. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for them. For the Commercial Development, or what we call MDU, and that's a big part of what Blue Stream is doing. So a lot of people do not know who Blue Stream is. Um, we actually did a lunch and learn about two years ago when we first branded on the Blue Stream. And um, so I'll tell you a little bit about the company. Formerly Advanced Cable of Coral Springs and Weston, um, and now Hometown Cable out of Port St. Lucie. Uh, when we first uh, got acquired, um, we thought about branding uh, Make Advanced Great Again, the MAGA term, but someone else stole that from us. So uh, we actually left the Advanced name behind and we moved over to Blue Stream and potentially more acquisitions to come as we continue to grow. As you'll see through this presentation, we are a 40-year-old company, but basically a new company and in a tremendous growth mode. Company history, uh, again, 1978 advanced cable purchased a small cable system in Coral Springs with 2,000 subscribers and 12 employees. Now over 40 years of cable service delivery in Coral Springs um, as advanced cable, um, and then we changed to Bluestream. Purchased in Weston, Florida, the Alvida Network in 1998. Advanced Cable was acquired on August 8th in 2016 by Twin Point Capital Investment. Rebranded to Bluestream in February of 2017. Uh, right now we have 150 employees, 47,000 subscribers, 1,300 business customers. We have about 13% penetration in Coral Springs and Weston, so we have a lot of growth just in those two cities where our market um, is, is not yet defined completely. Um, that's where our network is, but we'll continue to grow that out. Uh, currently, people are saying good things about us. Um, the customer experience is really what we're focused on. We've grown our Google review rating to 4.2 over the last two years since Bluestream has taken over. Um, Netflix has us rated as the seventh fastest network on their April carrier report card. I think we were eighth in May, fluctuates one or two, but actually the network is running faster than what Comcast and, and AT&T show on the Netflix rating. So I joined the company right after the acquisition. I was recruited over from Comcast. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the management team. As you'll see, there's a, there's a trend in here. Uh, Joe Canavan is the COO, and he joined the team at the point of acquisition. He's got a background of Atlantic Broadband and fr from Comcast as well. Relocated his family from Boston area at that time. Uh, Jenny Sanchez is the VP of MDU Sales. She joined the team just this April and has really done an unbelievable job in building the group, including Ramona now, to help grow the MDU part of the business. Um, as I said, I joined in October of 16 to help launch the business division. We didn't have, at Advanced Cable prior, a concentrated business unit. So we formed a business uh, division and we recruited a, a bunch of good people from the industry, mainly from Comcast. We brought over Carlisha Porter from uh, Comcast after 18 years there. Uh, a lot of us were there for quite some time. Stephen Lenzi, our construction manager, 16 years at Comcast. Uh, Ron Roth is our uh, VP of Engineering, he also came from Comcast. So you see the trend, a lot of good people came over. We like to say that we left the bad stuff behind and brought all the good ideas with us, really focused on the customer experience. So the management team um, has grown tremendously. I brought over a coordinator to help run the business unit. She had 28 years at Comcast. So a lot of people made a big faith jump to leave Comcast after through all that time for a new venture. And it's been an exciting time since I've joined the two and a half years since I've been here. Yeah, we've been running full speed, nonstop. The business strategy, um, we launched, again, a new business division, dedicated in-field reps, customer support, uh, initially attacked the, the network. We put a lot of money into the infrastructure, upgrading to the 3.1. Uh, we replaced nodes, and uh, we've done fiber uh, splits and new fiber strands, constantly proactive, proactively monitoring the network. We built a new network operations center out in our corporate office in Coral Springs. We've integrated that with the hometown cable acquisition in Port St. Lucie and then also West End. We've done some things in Tamarack and you'll see where we continue to grow, where we continue to provide redundancy. Uh, really improved the customer experience in the call center. Uh, we brought over a call center manager from Comcast as well. Um, she's trained, she's grown the business. We've blown out the building basically twofold right now as we continue to grow. We knew that we had to focus on the customer service part of it, so the customer experience is really where we've been winning. 
Uh, new internet products were introduced. We go up to one gig on coax and fiber. Uh, we bundle the voice internet TV solutions both on the commercial and on the MDU side. We have a host of PBX solution, uh, sales engineer support. Um, expanded the footprint outside of Coral Springs of Weston through MDU and general business expansion. Acquired hometown cable, Port St. Lucie in 2017, um, and there's some more things out there. We've got a very aggressive merger and acquisition group. We've got some money behind us. We want to continue to grow the company. We're in some negotiations right now <coughs> to continue to grow the business inside the state of Florida, and then hopefully we'll advance beyond that. The expansion areas right now, um, everything on here you see from Fort Myers and Naples area, Delray, West Palm Beach, all the way through uh, the whole South Florida area. Uh, we're looking to move into the Orlando area. Um, again, more, uh, more to follow. The reps right now, Ramona's team has done a great job, very aggressive, winning MDU. The, the stake in the ground was really back in 2016 when we first were acquired. We won over Kings Point in uh, Tamarack, which is a 5,000 residential unit facility. Um, two years, less than two years into that agreement, they reached back out to us and asked us if we could extend the contract by five years. So you don't really hear customers usually asking to extend the contracts, but they're very happy with the service that we've been providing. Uh, we saved the tenants uh, and residents a lot of money, and we're giving them a great customer experience, which is really what it's all about. So these areas, as we grow, everything on here, um, some of them already built out those areas on the MDU side. Some of them have already been contracted and con construction is about to begin. Some of them are in the red line stage of contracts being finalized, but the approvals have already been given. So the MDU team is what drives the growth of our company. As they go, the commercial team will follow behind them and then we'll build out commercial areas around the MDUs. So that's what we're doing in Tamarack right now where Kings Point is. Uh, we've been in the process of surveying the entire business area. We've got to go out and get right of entries from the business owners there, and then we'll build our commercial footprint so the agents can sell commercial outside of just Weston and Coral Springs, which is what we've been doing for the last two and a half years. Uh, I'm going to give this over to Ramona to talk a little bit about what bulk and, and you know, commercial development does and means to you guys, because this is something, a part of the business that we don't believe you guys have access to right now. Some of our competitors don't offer the channel the ability to, to make some money on bulk, right? And we, we're allowing you guys to do that. And it's also going to help the commercial business grow outside of where we are, which is good for you because we're winning a lot of business with you guys. Um, you guys are making money with us and we're delivering for your customers. So I'm going to give Ramona an opportunity to talk to that. Thank you. Thank you. So basically, bulk contracts are a contracts where an association or a homeowners association or even an apartment owner will contract for services for the entire property that's how we do a grow our, our our network that is the only way we are growing our network these contracts are tend to be between five to ten years for those services we are a third three part three play provider so we do we typically do more um, internet and cable bulking than the phone bulking, but we, we do offer the phone as well. The, where you guys can come in and the differences where comparative to non-bulk is where we have an opportunity for you is to find these bulk customers. And bulk customers are not just every single person that you meet because uh, typically if they are in a bulk, they are, they are in a contract. That contract has an expiration date. We typically need to get in there about a year to two years between uh, before that contract runs out to start that negotiation process, that and the, and the build process to get into these to these properties. We do build and we bring fiber to each and every unit, and that's something different about us than some of our competitors. Let's say a Comcast or an AT&T. We are actually providing fiber to each and every unit. We do complimentary services for the association offices. We we do a. a association benefit, um, basically a signing bonus sometimes for the association to, to um, experience, um, as well as we are very, very committed to our bulk customers. We know this is the only way that we can grow. And as Ray said, where I sell, then his, his network can grow out, where you guys can come in and have that partner chat, partnership. A uh, non-bulk or right of entry agreement is something that we do need, but we need bulk more. So right of entry agreements is basically uh, any type of building or a business that's giving us the right to enter that property and put in wiring. 
It might not be necessarily that we're going to have a contract with them, but basically the uh, ability to come into there and place wiring. Our customers, as I mentioned again, are typically condo associations, homeowner associations. Uh, many a times would do, do it with apartment owners, but typically they go more on the right of entry agreements uh, in which they share a piece of the revenue that is being made on that property. What's the, what's the plus for the property? Um, a way to make, make that appointment happen typically is discounted a, a guaranteed discount for the association for their residents. Um, the discounts typically off of retail rates are either 50 to 60 percent. Um, they have access to up to a gig of speed. Uh, we are bulking a lot more internet bulks nowadays because people are kind of moving away from cable bulks. Um, we are able to not necessarily do a double bulk. So if you do have a property that might be in a, vi a video bulk right now um, and they might want to think about adding an uh, internet bulk, we will come in and just do an internet bulk. We don't have to have uh, both aspects of it. So that's a big deal for us. Again, they're locked into these rates um, for an extended amount of term. Um, but with that comes many um, discounts for other retail services for their residents, as well as complimentary services for the association and a, just a wonderful user experience for the, for the resident. On these bulks, the bill goes directly to the association. So when speaking to property managers, maybe, that you might have come across, or association presidents, or even attorney's offices that handle a lot of associations, the, the understanding is this is not a retail customer. This is gonna, the bill is going to go to the association or the office of the apartment owner. What's wonderful about Bluestream that is very, very different from our, um, our competitors is that during our contracts, we do have provisions that they can add services, drop services. That's not unheard of in other con contracts. They can enhance their services. So we do have technology clauses because it is sometimes a longer term. We do have technology clauses in our contracts that allow them to retouch this as well as um, residents are always able to get other services on their own upgraded uh, against the bulk. Something also wonderful about Bluestream is that we do have a dedicated call center for our bulks. Each bulk receives their own phone, uh, dynamic phone number that they, for that call center, we distribute that. We are on site for three months during this transition so that it, there's no, is no pain. Typically, there's a little bit of sometimes pain for uh, um, properties, property managers, thinking that when they make a transition, it's going to be painful for them. We, we try to make it as easy and as seamless as possible so that the resident and that property manager or association president does not feel any issue. And again, comp services to the offices where a lot of times they don't get that with other providers. Question? Yes. Do the association or condos, do they get the equipment for free too? Oh, yeah. So um, let's say if they're going into an internet uh, or just even a video bulk. As I said, we bring fiber into the unit. That is installed into an ONT, which is basically the uh, commercial grade router. That. Um, equipment is there. If they do our cable product, we have a, we use a Google platform. So it's an Android box running off of a Google platform. So it's just like regular TV if you wanted to. It has the channels, the channel guide, all that. But it also has connectivity. So when your voice remote, somewhat, somewhat different than a Comcast, a voice remote, both have got where you say ESPN, you'll bring you to ESPN, it'll bring you to American Idol. But we also have where if you say, how do I make a brisket? Or how do I improve my golf swing? It will literally bring you to a YouTube video of that on your television. So a lot of residents, you know, we, we're in South Florida. The demographics are very, very different everywhere we go, depending on the city. <coughs> so whether you're an elderly, it's wonderful for that aspect. You're a techie, you can go in there. It's preloaded with all the apps as well. Um, you can add apps to our box as well. Our boxes are wireless. Our boxes are um, all DVRs and all HD and 4K ready. So all of that equipment in a bulk is, is with theirs, as well as the service on that. What about if they want to increase the speed, for instance, like 
guy is running a service business out of their out of their closet. Can they request it within the association for more? more yeah, so let's say the association does a bulk for 200 megabits, which is typically what we're doing. And our system is, um, I, is symmetrical as well. So we, we do, our speeds are both upload and download the same. So if um, the regular person, 200 is wonderful. But you have a lot of things that you're doing. You want to go to a gig, there is a, a pre-built uh, discount on our gig service. So you're going to be paying for an, a gig $35 more. So again, our discounts on our retail services are also much, much, much more competitive than some of our competitors as well. So the, a building going to our service is not only bringing it, uh, making it a smart building, future-proofing it, um, it's also saving a lot of money on the resident on the retail side for their residents as well. Question. Yes. Um, what happens when a, um, a say an apartment complex or, or building changes ownership with their existing contract with a uh, cable provider? It depends. Well, that would only happen with an apartment owner. Mm -hmm. um, if they're in a contract, even if that apartment owner isn't within that, that that contract goes with that apartment. <laughs> until the agreement um, expires. Any other questions? So, and again, typically apartment owners will do a more of a right of entry agreement in which they are granting the access to a provider and then receiving on their side they receive a typically a revenue uh, share of the revenue that is made from that provider on that property and we are open to that as well so if there's apartment owners that would also and this is a wonderful thing for apartment owners because when we do bring in the fiber and a lot of times the signal level I, I've talked to so many people where people when they're looking at apartments they're coming in and they're checking with it, are they getting signal in their unit What's the cell service level of that? So when we bring in our services and it, make that, it makes that a smart complex, basically, the service levels and the signal levels that they get for all of their equipment is amazing. So they really, it makes it much more competitive because in this world of what's my signal, what am, you know, everybody's working on their computer. If they're not having good service and they don't have access to one good <coughs> service or not to be able to get a gig, that might be a, something that they're not going to look at that apartment. They're going to go to the next place to see if that's a better thing. So that's an, it's a wonderful aspect for the apartment owners as well. Question? Yes. So if you're going into an association that has a contract with the Comcast currently, a um, couple questions. How do you compete against, against Comcast? And how do you win over Comcast? Is it mostly on is it price or performance? Or it's a, it's a couple of service? different things. Um, and every property is different, honestly. Um, so the, the, again, the demographics make a big difference for a property. We typically win over a Comcast because we are, we are installing fiber to the unit, which is Comcast is running over old coax. Um, the problem with coax, it's affected by heat and water and other aspects. And with coax, they're typically bringing it from a, pet, uh, a node, and then it's getting chopped up along the way degrading signal every which way that that is. With us, we are bringing fiber directly into the unit. There's not being split off and, and just to the building, literally to the unit. So this level of service quality, the signal levels, the speeds, our commitment to our bulk customers. Comcast does not, I, I previously worked for Comcast and I previously worked for AT&T, both in, this, in the bulk world. I can tell you, none, neither one of those have the commitment to the bulks that we do, and they see that. And they see our commitment for that, so you're my as well as as well as cost. I mean, no matter what, an association will look at cost um, over a, a lot of things. So it is it's factoring in everything. You're not using any existing infrastructure. No, we don't. We don't touch anybody's wiring. Mm -hmm. And we're able to also build fairly quickly. So a property under 500 units will typically take three to four months for us, and that's the outside groundwork as well as the installs. Uh, property over 500 units to 1,000, maybe about six months. Over 1,000, maybe about nine months. And that's more for the install aspect of customer education and actually literally installing it through the home. So kind of in this environment here, in the non-bulk, you know, this is a competitive environment for us. We, you know, they get revenue sharing. 
So it behooves them to push us, but you know, there's maybe two other providers in there as well. So we want to be in the bulk world where it's all about us, right? Because we're providing 100% of the services to the tenants. In this world, we're competing. Sometimes we get exclusive marketing rights to be able to leave our marketing materials there for everybody, uh, and they get revenue sharing. But you know, this is not really where we want to be. We want to be into the bulk world. That's that's a better profitable business for us, and, and better for all the tenants too. Do you have associations asking you to light up like the public areas with Wi-Fi? Yes. And you do that. And yes, that? we do support that. Mm -hmm. We do, and then on, from a commercial business perspective, if they have their their clubhouse or their offices, right. then I'll team with Ramona's team and come in and provide business services, whether it be uh, video or phone or internet <laughs> service, because that's not usually included. They get co certain complimentary packages, but it usually doesn't encompass everything there, so then my team will come in and work with them to, to complete the package. What kind of tools do you have to, close to see if you're in a geographic uh, area? Well, that's the best part. You don't need to see this. So we, we will build to anywhere that has a bulk, that we can get a bulk. So we don't necessarily need to be in that area. We will build to that area, which is what we, Ray wants. So where I, I can get a bulk, he can follow with business services. And that's how we are expanding our network. And that's where uh, you're not only can partner with us on, on the bulk aspect, but uh, on the business services. So we, we have engineering meetings every week. and. I'm constantly asking where are we going, where are we going? Because I want to get outside Coral Springs and Weston. I didn't come here to work in Coral Springs and Weston, although I live in Coral Springs and it's convenient. You know, our team wants to grow. I recruited some very good, experienced people in the industry, but they didn't come over to work in Coral Springs and Weston. They want to go to Fort Myers, they want to go to Orlando, they want to spread out. Um, there's other companies that have similar um, strategies, but we like to think that we're doing it bigger, best, uh, faster, and better than they are. So you would go into a, a building talk to whoever, you guys will just go there and just slide it up. Well, again, <laughs> it's a little bit a little longer than that. Typically, uh, obviously, there's an, ag an agreement has to come to, come to play, um, and then the build out. So the opportunity isn't only for, for um, buildings that are in current agreements. It might be for a building that doesn't have an agreement that might be thinking about it. Because, not, again, um, internet is playing much more of a bigger role in the bulk world than it used to. Um, and properties are now sometimes doing the video bulk, and which is something that's very wonderful for us. We will do a double play of video and internet, but let's say a property a year, two years, three years down the road says, you know what, we don't need this video product anymore. We are, we're, we're fine with the internet. We will allow that to drop out of our contract. There's some aspects of it that will bump the speed up and will reduce the rate. But again, most of our competitors will never, ever, ever let you out of a contract. So um, that, that, that's a wonderful aspect. So we will be able to go anywhere that we are able to get a full contract for. Do you actively um, look for business from uh, developers for sites that are under yes. construction or mm -hmm. pre-construction? Definitely, definitely. But again, you have to get into with the developers, and, and again, that's a, that's another world. The developer um, would have to be in um, in the mind of bulking. Some developers were originally bulking most of their properties, uh, then they went to a, a f time frame where they weren't bulking. So if it's a, a developer wants to bulk, we are there. We will bid that yes and bring fiber to that property mm -hmm. at, during that build. You you, it's all your own equipment. You don't back call to a CEO or something. Like that. So, and again, you asked about how we compete against Comcast, and, and Mona kind of explained it. The biggest advantage we have is that there's existing coax circuits out there, you know, networks of coax at all these developments, and we're coming in with a fiber solution, and the existing providers are not going to go out and rewire that entire complex with fiber. So they're kind of at the mercy of the customer to stay at a higher price with maybe less uh, customer service that they're getting, and we're coming along with a fiber solution, maybe a lower price, and certainly a better customer service level that they've been getting. And so it's a win-win for every, the tenants win, the, the property owner wins, we win, you guys win, as you'll see in a minute here, so it's a win-win for everybody. If you go into an association, and say some of the people already have Comcast and AT&T, do they have to now get rid of that and go to your service, or can they still keep that? 
they're able to keep that service, but typically if the association is paying for a, let's say cable, they're, they're paying for that as well. It's coming out of their maintenance fee. So t most of the time a resident won't want to double pay unless they are just sold that they cannot get rid of their <coughs> phone or, or something aspect of it. Okay. But they, but on our so on our service, we don't touch anybody else's line. So they, if they do choose to, we don't. They are able to. Right. As far as phone goes, can you port phone? Uh, phone numbers? Yes, we can port the phone numbers. Our rate is extremely competitive. It's nineteen ninety five. We put that in our contracts for the term of the agreement. Anybody that wants it on a retail basis, um, it, it's very good. Okay, more of a single line phone for residents. So exactly. Not really business model. Yeah, same thing over there. So from the agent channel perspective, you know, again, this is new for you guys, and um, I think TCG is very excited about the opportunity to offer the subs ability to make more money outside of just the commercial area. So we provide um, more personalized agent support. Um, this is new for us with you guys. We've had a couple of opportunities that we've been working on. Ramona's going to be your point person here. But you can see she's very experienced. When you work with her, she'll make sure that your customer, the property owner, manager, will be well taken care of. On the commercial side, um, for those of you, and there's not a lot of agents here that I've met before, but I work with a lot of agents through TCG, um, and the customer will tell you, and what we're hearing is that the personalized service is outstanding. Um, I give my commercial customers, not only agents, my cell phone number. They have access to me. I take the calls 24-7. And we've had our issues, uh, you know, on the business side, every carrier does. But the reason customers stay is because we answer the phone. We answer the phone, we roll the truck, we take care of them, we care about every single customer from dollar one to our largest customer. So we're going to give a, a personalized agent support as well as your end user support. So once you sell a customer, they're going to get treated exactly the way they are as my direct team sold it or the call center sold it. Nobody uh, gets differentiated at all. Uh, simplify quote and sales process through installation. Um, we're, we're putting in an automated system. We're not there yet because we, we've integrated these different companies. Uh, for right now, people are reaching out on email to me or phone calls, um, and the team at TCG will tell you that we're very responsive. Usually, uh, if a lead comes my way, in minutes you guys are getting a response. Uh, the quote, an agreement is sent out, and I'll attend appointments if need be uh, to help the agent close the deal. We deliver excellent customer experience to the agents and the end users. We'll, we are not going to lose on price. So the, one of the nice things about being uh, under one roof in Coral Springs is everybody is there, marketing, finance, COO, sales, service. Our head end is there. We all work together as a team. If a deal comes up that we need to get together on decisions are made right on the spot, um, agent can call me. If I need to reduce the price to win the deal, we'll, we'll make that call immediately. Agent wins the deal. We, obviously, we want to sell for as high as we can because there's more money in it for everybody, but we'll match or beat any competitive environment. We provide competitive compensation program for our agents. Um, our pricing is aggressive. This is both the shared fiber and coax, and I'll talk about the shared fiber in a second. Just to give you an idea of our speeds, all the way up to one gig at 299. If we need to compete, we will. We have uh, TV services um, and our older fiber pricing you'll see down here, which was pretty much rack rate. But the focus right now for this company is fiber. We're actually changing our name to Blue Stream Fiber. So um, that's where we're headed. And it's really going that way on the bulk side. Commercial, where we're limited in Coral Springs and, and Weston, like, like our competitors, we're not going to go rewire all of our customers from coax to fiber, but we are in select buildings doing that right now in Coral Springs and Weston because it makes sense to, to be able to compete with fiber. As we grew into Shotgun Road, which is our first endeavor outside of Coral Springs and Weston, uh, the competition there, coax environment, everybody's jumping on the fiber. They love the idea of that, and so we're matching with aggressive pricing as well. All of our new build areas, so wherever Ramona's team goes, from a bulk perspective, we're going to follow with commercial. It's going to be either a shared or dedicated fiber solution. No more coax going, going forward. Dedicated fiber with the SLA, competitively priced. Um, 100 meg dedicated fiber, symmetrical, $500 a month right now. Um, very, very aggressive. Our 300 meg, with, this was a, a unique product that we rolled out. We didn't even roll this out initially. It's not even on our, our flyers, our slicks, 
but we, we're very nimble and we can make adjustments. And one customer said, uh, you know, 100 meg's not enough. I don't want to spend more money on the 500 meg, which is $800 a month. So I made a product code for $300 and call it a day at 650 and we sold two or three of them. So we can make those nimble moves on the fly. $800 for 500 megs, one gig at $1,300. Um, we can special price that as needed. We are killing the market in this. Uh, the issue with the agents right now is we're limited in Coral Springs and Weston. So that's where we have to play right now. But as we follow the bulk team into the other areas that we're expanding to, we'll bring that dedicated fiber aggressive pricing with us. We're not trying to gouge the, the market. We're trying to provide a very fair price to, to a great product and then service it behind that. So those prices are real. Um, there's you know, static IPs and things like that that go with that. If they want to uh, manage switch, we provide that. But as you guys know, that's very, very aggressive pricing. I have agents calling me saying, you guys should be killing it. And we have three reps on the street right now from a commercial perspective that are dedicated field reps uh, that you guys compete with. I manage the reps there. I also manage the residential direct sales reps, and I manage the channel. So everything is, is under my umbrella. Um, Inc. wins the deal. As you know, um, we have not had one issue yet in the two and a half years since we've been doing this. We've had probably three or four conflicts where an agent met in the same place as the rep, and Inc. wins the deal. I think one or two were won by the agent, one or two were won by the rep, and but under me, I never share information. If you guys run a lead to me, I don't share with the field. If I know that you guys are working on a deal and the field is working on it, I kind of stay silent on it and let the, the nature take its course, and Inc. wins the deal. Um, and again, if I need the special price, I've done this on the gig. You know, I have a building code for 1,200. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather sell it up higher if we could, because it'll sell. But if we have to get aggressive to win a deal, then we will. Uh, commercial spiff, well, so regular spiff right now is one-time MRC. We've been running that uh, since we introduced this to TCG um, for June. Um, as Laura said earlier about closing out the second quarter, very aggressive. So we upped it to 1.5 uh, for new acquisition sales, Inc. through June, uh, through June 30th. But if it's a 500 megs of fiber or one gig of fiber, it'll be a two-time MRC. So I'm trying to close out the month strong. Um, the deals are easy to win on our pricing. And again, get me involved. There's testimonials that I can provide for you guys. The, the community is saying some great things. The Google reviews are all there. A lot of that is driven by our bulk services and a lot also by commercial sales. So the spiff is there for you. On the MDU side, it's a little bit different. There's no residual on bulk, okay? Um, it's a different deal. The, the financials are completely different than a regular commercial sale. So it's a one-time payout based on number of units. We need to have uh, within two years, as Ramona said, to engage, okay, uh, as their contract is expiring, no other a consultant or third party can be involved because sometimes, um, as you mentioned, there might be developers or somebody else. There are a lot of consultants in that business, so we're looking for you guys to come up. And we've had agents ask over the last couple of years, hey, do you do this, do you do that there? And we do. So all we need you is for you guys to walk us into that deal, uh, be involved uh, in the initial introduction and the appointment. We'll do the rest of the selling for the, from there. If you have a relationship that can help us close the deal, obviously that's welcomed. Um, and then we're looking for 75 units and above is where, you know, typically, and Ramona was telling me this morning, and I was excited, she's, she's bidding on a couple of 1,900 unit facilities. I mentioned earlier, Kings Point is 5,000 units. Those are the ones, obviously, bigger bang for the buck for everybody involved, for the agents as well. And, you know, as many places as we can go, I welcome that because then I follow behind with the commercial department and we build out commercial businesses for you guys to sell into those other areas as well. The SPIF right now is a $15 per unit compensation. If we have a 1,000 unit, um, it's a $15,000 payout. All you have to do is introduce us, walk us into the deal, and you know there's $15,000 on a 1,000 unit, and there's plenty of them out there. If you think of Kings Point, we found that one on our own, but had an agent brought us into us, that would have been a $75,000 payout for doing nothing other than introducing us into the opportunity. So it is lucrative, it's not residual, and I understand that. I, I, Dan and I talk about this all the time. It just doesn't work on a residual basis, but you can make some nice upfront money, and then obviously then if we build commercial around that, you can be involved in those sales as well. Uh, what I'll do always on the commercial side is I'll share with the agent channel where we're building out on the, on the bulk side so that you guys know where we're going. Everybody should know from my emails. Um, if you want to send me an email, I'll give everybody my card and add you to the distribution list so I can share where we're going. But when Shotgun Road came out, immediately I got calls from agents. They made some sales there as we're building out fiber to Shotgun Road. The nice thing about that, 
um, on Shotgun Road, which is right on the other side of 75 by our Western Head End. Uh, and the way we sell that, we're selling it as a private fiber network that we're building just for the Shotgun Road complex. It connected directly to our head end. So it's not sharing with the neighborhoods. And that's what happens with many of the other providers, Comcast included, where they share their coax services with residential and commercial and becomes uh, overpenetrated and the service goes up and down. The kids come home from school, the, the afternoon business are affected. That's not going to happen when we build out a private fiber network for those business areas. And that's pretty much it, very simple. Um, small provider getting big, acquisitions coming, and, and internal growth through, through bulk. So open up for any questions. I think you guys asked a lot of questions on the bulk side, which is good. Anything else on bulk or commercial that you guys want to ask? So you, you guys are not talking like maybe in the future change your idea on doing residuals? Because that's, that's a lot of work. We're, we're very nimble and open to a lot of different things. So our COO is a very smart financial man. Um, but he's not looking at the channel. Well, he is, but again, nobody's even offering anything right now to the channel for bulk, right? There's an opportunity to make some money for very little work, actually, for just giving us a name and walking us in, and you don't have to do anything else. You're not involved in the, in the quoting. You're not involved with the servicing. You're not involved in anything. So it, yeah, it's, it's a... But it's nice walk, like you got to leave, though. So that's like the Okay, well, yeah, that's so, something open for discussion. Um, if, if there's the ability to make money here with the channel, then I'm sure we'll look at different ways to compensate the channel. Um, again, we've only had a couple of, of uh, questions about this over the last two and a half years, but we never really introduced this to the channel. We talked about it two years ago, but now we're getting a little bit more formal with it. Anybody else? All right, thank you guys very much.